this point, several people on my channel have asked the question, could a non-food scientist pursue a master's or PhD in food science? So instead of answering those people individually, I thought it was about time I made a video on this. Now, if you're here for the short answer, can non-food scientists pursue a higher degree, whether that's a master's or PhD? The answer is yes. Uh, of course, I'm going to go into more detail than that. So in this video, I want to talk about why getting a degree in food science is actually quite a nice transition, especially if you have a bachelor's degree in a different science discipline. But I'll also talk about uh, advantages and disadvantages if you don't have a food science background and you would like to go into food science. The first thing I want to mention is that food science as a area of study is actually uh, a lot of different types of science or it takes from all the other basic sciences. It's partly physics, partly engineering, chemistry, organic chemistry, biochemistry, microbiology, biology. It's really a big agglomeration of all the other basic sciences, but you apply what you learn to a specific system and that's food, right? So what you learned in chemistry or microbiology, you learned maybe a general theory or a general mechanism. Whereas food science uses those same theories, but you learn why it's important to food. And why I mention this is because this means anyone who has a degree in really um, one of those basic sciences, chemistry, microbiology, biology, uh, physics, you could easily transition into food science, right? Because you learned a lot of the same material, you just didn't learn the specifics on why it's important for food. Just to illustrate, I'll give you a couple examples of people that I met in grad school and what their backgrounds were. So Bianca, my friend Bianca, we met at the University of Wisconsin-Madison when we were both in graduate school. Her bachelor's degree was in microbiology, so general micro. For her master's degree, she was in a food microbiology lab. So that's a pretty easy jump, just she went more specific. Now she's just looking at food and she did a project testing uh, the microbial counts of different produce. Now, after she defended her master's degree, she actually did a really big sort of turn, U-turn. She got her first job, and I believe she's still there. She's a product developer at a tea and coffee company. So even though you could argue, well, her background is all microbiology, she still has a degree in food science, generally in food science, and she wanted to pursue product development. Now, my friend Amelia, her bachelor's was in biology, and I met her when she was studying proteins in a food science lab. So she really was specialized in proteins. She defended her master's degree in food science, and she is someone that's stuck with what she specialized in. So she is now at Air Protein, which is a startup trying to make um, sustainable protein using uh, the components of air, like oxygen, carbon dioxide, and, and nitrogen. I believe. So there are people that do really stick to the topic they uh, specialized in grad school, which sometimes is helpful in landing your first job because you just spent several years digging into that one key topic. And one last example that is kind of unique is my friend Brian. So he got his PhD in food science. His background before that was chemistry. And when I met Brian, he, he did do a very, uh, food chemistry focused project, I guess. He was, I believe, isolating and quantifying some of the uh, antioxidants in garlic and onions, I wanna say. It smelled really bad, I remember. So Brian uh, has his PhD in food science now, but actually he took a very unique route. He is now an author of a food science book and does consulting for different food companies. And if you're looking to learn more about the discipline as food science as a whole, I highly recommend starting with my video talking about what's food science because that will give you a bit of a peek into what food scientists do and what they study. All right, hopefully that showed you that people from all different backgrounds, all different degrees, 
can successfully pursue a master's or PhD in food science. So let's move on to some of the nitty gritty details. What could be some advantages or disadvantages of being a non-food scientist and transitioning to a food science degree? I'll start with the disadvantages just to get them over with. And these are probably pretty obvious. I would say the biggest disadvantage is that your background doesn't contain food science. And really for graduate school and for your supervisor, this is not a problem. They believed if you were hired by them, they believe you can learn it, but you will probably have to take more classes than the other grad students that do have a food science background because the graduate school is going to try and catch you up on that food science curriculum that you missed. So I know at uh, UW-Madison where I went for grad school, if you did not have a food science background and were getting your master's degree in food science, you had to take, I believe, uh, three classes to catch up. You had to take food preservation, food functionality, and food chemistry. And that's because all the food scientists had already taken those classes in undergrad. So you will have to take more coursework. And at least at Madison, in these classes, you are with the undergraduates. So you are the oldest people in class probably. And uh, it can feel a little weird. It can feel like you are behind because of course you don't have that food science background that a lot of your peers do. So I think in reality, for your graduate research, for your supervisor, as long as you catch up, this is not a problem, but it can always feel like you're behind, especially when a lot of your peers in grad school have learned so many of these different food science principles, you know, years ago. It's just second nature to them. And so you feel as if you've missed out on a lot of stuff and that you are constantly trying to work really hard and catch up to them. But let's move on to what advantages there could be if you come from a dis different discipline into food science. The first advantage I can think of is it's often really nice to have someone from the outside who has a fresh pair of eyes come look at your research or the papers you're writing because they will see everything in a different lens because they don't have that food science background. So they might question different things or point out other flaws that someone who has a food science background may not see. And I see this in research a lot. It's really the people who come in from the outside that tend to have the biggest breakthroughs because they don't see things the same way everyone else does in that group. Another great advantage is that, say for example, your bachelor's degree is in chemistry, you will find that there are some master's or PhD projects that are in food science, but really heavily rely on your knowledge of chemistry or the chemistry skills you, you learned in those laboratories. So there are food science uh, projects that actually you could argue a chemist, someone who has a degree in chemistry, may be better skilled at pursuing. The same could be said for food microbiology. There's no reason a microbiologist could not be skilled at that project as well. I've seen other projects where the technique, say they're using a very new novel technique in this food science master's uh, project. Maybe you as an undergrad in biochemistry learned that technique and us food science did, students did not. That would be a great opportunity for a biochemist student to transition into food science because something in their background, whether that's their degree or a technique they used during undergrad, could be utilized during their graduate school experience. All right, if you're a non-food scientist looking into food science degrees, I hope I answered some of your questions. If you have more, of course, put them down in the comments and I will get back to you. Otherwise, I have a whole playlist on careers in food science, things like what's food science, what's the salary, what types of jobs you can get, which also might be useful to you. Bye.